Thank you. To ask the First Minister what the Scottish Government's response is to the Supreme Court decision regarding legislating on an independence referendum. First Minister. Well, while uh, of course disappointed by it, I uh, respect and accept the Supreme Court's judgment on the Lord Advocate's reference uh, regarding the Scottish Parliament's powers to legislate for an independence referendum. However, Presiding Officer, the denial of democracy by Westminster parties demonstrates now beyond any doubt uh, that the notion of the UK as a voluntary partnership uh, of nations is not uh, now, if it ever was, a reality. It remains open, of course, to the UK Government to respect democracy and to reach an agreement with the Scottish Government uh, for a lawful, constitutional, democratic uh, referendum. However, regardless of attempts by Westminster to block democracy, uh, I will always work to ensure that Scotland's voice is heard and that the future of Scotland is always in Scotland's hands. Stephanie Callaghan. Thank you. Yesterday's ruling has profound implications for the UK and Scotland's democracy, particularly, as you mentioned, the notion of the UK being a voluntary partnership of nations. And if the UK government wants to evidence this as a voluntary union, all they have to do is stop standing in the way of democracy, come to the table and reach an agreement over holding a legal referendum with the Scottish government. Why does the First Minister think they are continuing to shy away from this? First Minister. Uh, well, unionist Westminster politicians uh, want to silence Scotland's voice because they're scared of what Scotland might say. It is quite simple. Uh, any politician who was confident of their case and confident of being able to persuade others of their case uh, would not be trying to block democracy. They would be embracing democracy. So I think we know everything we need to know. Uh, about the views of Westminster Unionist parties uh, by their determination to block Scotland's democracy, but it will not prevail. Uh, I think uh, Unionist politicians uh, with some critical faculties and perhaps the power of independent uh, thinking uh, probably understand uh, that yesterday's judgment raises uh, profoundly uncomfortable questions about the basis and the future of the United Kingdom. Any partnership in which one partner needs the consent of another to choose its own future is not voluntary um, and it's not even a partnership. Uh, you know, within the UK right now, it is the case that England could decide to become independent, but Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland supposedly can't. Uh, that is not a partnership, that's not voluntary and that is not equal. Uh, but Scotland's voice will not be silenced. Scotland's future is up to the people of Scotland and that will always be the case. Jim Fairley. <clears throat> Thank you, President Officer. First Minister, Douglas Ross keeps saying that no one on these benches is asked how you would stay in the Union. Well, the answer is simple. Win an election with that in the, in the manifesto and you get to dictate the terms. So with that in mind, this Scottish Parliament has the biggest ever majority for an independence referendum in the history of devolution, but has been blocked from enacting that mandate. So can the First Minister inform the Parliament if she has had any indication from the UK Government as to how the people of Scotland can exercise their democratic right and have a choice in their future? First Minister. Well, the mandate uh, for an independence referendum in this Parliament is undeniable. There is a clear majority uh, for that. Uh, and uh, I think in any other measure of democracy in any other uh, country, we wouldn't uh, have politicians seeking to deny that. Look, I stand ready to uh, discuss this issue with the UK Government at any time. I fully anticipate, though, that their democracy denial will continue, at least in the short term, because they are scared of the outcome of a democratic process. Uh, but you cannot, and I, I watched uh, Douglas Ross and others uh, squirming on this issue uh, yesterday on television, on the one hand trying to say that the United Kingdom is a voluntary union, but on the other hand gleefully trying to defend the fact that Scotland has no way of choosing Thank a different you. future. It's not democratic, Briefly, it's First not Minister. sustainable. Uh, let's have a proper process and let the people of Scotland decide our own future. Great Hoy. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. When, when asked by Glenn Campbell during a BBC debate two days before the Holyrood election, 
what voters should do who, quote, and I quote, want you, Nicola Sturgeon, as First Minister, but don't want independence, the First Minister confidently said they should vote for me. Why now are her colleagues claiming that these voters support independence? And is, the same, is this the same deep-seated duplicity that we can expect to see in any de facto independence referendum at Thank the next you. general election? Briefly, First Minister. Uh, briefly, Presiding Officer. You know, if the Tories are now reduced to suggesting that people in Scotland uh, didn't know that I supported a referendum, then the Tories are even more desperate than I thought they were. But Douglas Ross uh, is saying, it's just quoting my own words. Well, let me offer this, presiding officer. If the Tories don't think that my words were clear enough in the election last year, how about their words? Because the Tory message couldn't have been clearer. They said, if the SNP wins the election, there will be a referendum. The only way to stop it is to vote Tory. That seems pretty clear to me, presiding officer. And guess what? The SNP won the election. It's time to have a referendum.